tell me why you and Alice decided to move to Steubenville. And again, forgive me for keep reiterating this. Yeah, sure. I just don't want anyone to think that we're doing inside baseball here because someone could listen to your story mm -hmm. and be inspired to join some other group or, or not necessarily oh, even move. Maybe yeah. it's to kind of build up from within. But, but you and Alice, why did, where did you move from and why did you move here? So we actually got married and moved here right away. I was living in, well, I guess Fredericksburg, Virginia, right immediately before. And she was up in Alexandria, Virginia, going to school at the JP2 Institute. She yeah. had her master's there. Uh, immediately before that, I was at Oxford uh, for a few years in Baylor University prior, which is where we met. And I thought, you know, I could stay, stick it out here in kind of the DC area, or I can go back and get a postdoc and then try and get a job at Oxford. Um, but we really, really wanted to be in a place where we could live the faith. I think there was a kind of almost an existential thing for me that I was feeling more than more than she was, where I was a convert. She was she's a convert too, but I a bit more recently and like just craving to have a more intimate relationship with Christ and feeling that the cultural assumptions that we had or really just like the way that our society was ordered we almost blocked it in certain ways. Like I had to save for retirement. I had to stick away 10% to my 401k every month. I had to, you know, you go off the examples. And the truth of the matter is that Christ really upends a lot of that. And I thought, really, if if we're going to be following Christ, why is it that my public life doesn't look all that much different than, say, an atheist, or just an average liberal? Really, if Christ is going to change the way that I'm behaving towards others, wouldn't, if that spreads out, wouldn't that yeah. change everything? I mean, there's kind of this strange... That's the sort of argument yeah. that Hahn and his co-author make. I forget his name, forgive me. Yeah, Brendan McGinley. Yeah. In uh, in their book, uh, It Is Right and Just. Yep. It's like we have this idea, what does he talk about? Um, what's that syndrome the called? Stockholm, Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. Yep. Where you kind of just be like, well, I don't want to impose this upon anyone else. I'm not trying to make the culture Catholic. It's like, why? <laughs> why? Why would you even think that that would be a negative thing? I mean, you want your family to be Catholic, yes. You should evangelize your neighbors, yes. <laughs> kind of what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like Christ wants to be king of your hearts, over your families, of your friends, your neighborhood, your city? Where does it stop? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's king of the universe. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, so that was really what I thought I was seeing around, and I thought, I need the help to get there. I don't really know what that looks like. And I was invited out by Scott at the St. Paul Center, and I met uh, Andrew Jones, yeah. and Mark and I got Barnes, and I got more time together. We'd met in England, and I was exposed to this whole new world, and I thought, gosh this is it this is the chance this is this is what i've been craving and so we moved here we uplifted everything and we thought let's move to the rust belt what i love about your story too is it what it's not like you're somebody without options i mean you're going to oxford mm -hmm. i presume you are you know somewhat financially well off mm -hmm. like you had many options and yet you chose this and, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's cool yeah and i do again i mean to your point we can create this everywhere i thought i needed a little bit more remedial help i really didn't know what it looked like and through new polity we're trying to help people you know figure out some of their other options but i think that you know we can start to create these really pockets of of real profound christianity Thank you for watching this clip. You can click here to watch the full episode. And I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors and to our amazing patrons for making all of this possible. Please do us a favor before you go, click that subscribe button and then the bell. And that way YouTube will be forced to let you know every time we put out a new episode.